So, David McCallum's died at the age of 90. He first came to fame playing Ilya Kuryakin in the hit television series The Man From U.N.C.L.E. He was so popular that he received more fan mail from young women than any other actor in MGM's history, and that includes Clark Gable and Elvis Presley. The police had to stop an album signing that he was due to do at Macy's in New York in the 60s because the crowds were just too big to manage. Although the show aired at the height of the Cold War, McCallum's Russian alter ego became a pop culture hit. The actor was inundated with fan letters and a Beatles-like frenzy followed him everywhere he went. This photograph shows the crowds awaiting him when he landed at Heathrow Airport. He had a Beatles-style haircut, which in the early 60s was verging on the controversial. His penchant for wearing black turtleneck sweaters even created a fashion fad in the UK. McCallum made Kuryakin into a sex symbol of the period. He provided a trendy contrast to Robert Vaughan's Napoleon Solo, his fellow spy who went in for expensive suits and ties. David Keith McCallum was born on the 19th of September 1933 in Glasgow the second of two sons of orchestral violinist David McCallum Sr. and his wife Dorothy, a cellist. When he was three, his family moved to London for his father to play as the leader of the London Philharmonic Orchestra. Early in the Second World War, he was evacuated back to Scotland, where he lived with his mother at Gartishan near Loch Lomond. McCallum won a scholarship to University College School, a boys' independent school in Hampstead, London where, encouraged by his parents to prepare for a career in music, he played the oboe. However, in 1946, at the age of 13, he began doing boy voices for the BBC Radio Rep Company. He began his acting career by taking bit parts in British films from the late 50s. His first acting role was in Whom the Gods Love Die Young, playing a doomed royal. A James Dean-themed photograph of McCallan caught the attention of the rank organisation, who signed him in 1956. After this, he started getting more and more roles, including an outlaw in Robbery Under Arms and a radio operator, Harold Bridge, on RMS Titanic, A Night to Remember. In the 1957 film noir crime drama classic, Hell Drivers, McCallum plays Stanley Baker's brother. It's an all-star cast with Baker, Patrick McGowan, Herbert Lom, William Hartnell, Sid James and Jill Ireland. This is where he met Ireland, and later that year, he married her. I don't credit it. Tom! Tom! In the film Violent Playground, he played a juvenile delinquent acting alongside Peter Cushing and again Stanley Baker. It's a drama about a youth who goes off the rails and things end up going horribly wrong. He ends up taking a class from a young children hostage and accidentally shoots one. We'll have your right in two ticks. I, I warned them. I... It's worth a watch if you see it on television. I think the channel Talking Pictures show it quite regularly, actually. Over the years, he starred and guest starred in various other TV series and small films. Then in 2003, he starred in the CBS television series NCIS, playing Dr. Donald Ducky Mallard, the team's chief medical examiner and one of the show's most popular characters. Like everything else McCallum's ever done, he took the role very seriously and did monumental amounts of research. This included sitting in on many autopsies and familiarising himself with the technical aspects and the terminology. He also visited conventions on the subject as well. He became so knowledgeable that he was considered as also being offered the job as technical advisor on the show. In a funny scene from NCIS in the second series, the one titled Meat Puzzle, Special Agent Catelyn Todd asked Special Agent Leroy Jethro Gibbs what did Ducky look like when he was younger? And Gibbs replied, Ilya Kuryakin. McCallum was NCIS's only original cast member until his death in 2023. Rumour has it he made $75,000 per show. With both of his parents being professional musicians, it's not unsurprising McCallum was also musically gifted. In the 1960s, he was offered a recording contract, popular at the time with various actors, though most of them made records of them singing. McCallum did not sing on these records like many others. As a classically trained musician, he conceived a blend of oboe and strings with guitar and drums and presented instrumental interpretation of hits of the day. The official arranger on the albums was H.P. Barnum. However, McCallum conducted and contributed 
several original compositions of his own over the course of the four LPs he made under this contract. Perhaps his most well-known recording is The Edge, which has been sampled by Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. It's also used in the GTA video games. With regard to his personal life, McCallum married actress Jill Ireland in London in 1957. They met, as I have said previously, during the production of the film Hell Drivers. McCallum remained married to Ireland for 10 years and they had three sons, Paul, Jason and Valentine. Jason, who was adopted, died from an accidental drug overdose in 1989. Val McCallum is a guitarist who plays on and off with Jackson Brown. There you go, there's those musical genes coming through again. On the 16th of September 1967, McCallum married fashion model turned interior designer Catherine Carpenter. The couple met at a photo shoot for Glamour magazine in 1965 and they were together for 58 years. They had a son, Peter, and a daughter, Sophie. On August 27, 1999, McCallum was naturalized as a United States citizen. He had six grandchildren. McCallum died in the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City on September the 25th, 2023, of natural causes at the age of 90. David McCallum, rest in peace.